Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to respond to a short answer question. An SAQ or a short answer question is just that guys, it's short. It's three sentences, maybe four. What you'll be asked to do for an SAQ is generally to identify and explain. So what does that mean? To identify, you show something, you give an example, but then you have to explain it. You need to make it clear that you understand the question by providing evidence. You need to include specific events, details, and developments in your answers to prove that you fully understand. This is a skill and a content exercise. From the College Board, what is an SAQ? An SAQ, guys, on the exam, there'll be three questions. You'll have 40 minutes to answer those three questions, and it's 20% of your exam score. You'll analyze historians' interpretations, historical sources, and propositions about history. Questions provide opportunities for students to explain the historical examples that they know best. Some questions will just be a question. Others will include texts, images, graphs, or maps. Now, here's an update for the 2017, 2018, and beyond. The number of required SAQs is reduced to three. The time has actually been decreased to 40 minutes. Students will choose between two options for the final SAQ. Each one focuses on a different time period. So here's how it breaks down. Question one is required, and it focuses on time periods three through six. Question two, same thing. Required time periods three through six. But question three, you can choose between one of two questions. Question One question will focus on periods one through three. Question four will focus on periods four through six. Pick one. So if you want to do one, two, and three, that's fine. Or you can do one, two, and four. But you can't do one, three, and four, or two, three, and four. One and two will always be required because they are on periods three through six. And that comes from College Board. All right. So the SAQ overview and formatting. This is what it's going to look like when you actually sit for the SAQ. Question one, right here, and you can only write within this line. So I want you to think about this if you go to any kind of competition where there is some kind of blue mat with a white line, whether it's a wrestling tournament, a cheerleading competition, a dance competition, um, a martial arts competition, you put one foot outside this line, you're done. Same thing here, guys. You write outside this line, it does not count. So the types of questions generally come from the key concepts and they deal with at least one historical thinking skill, causation, comparison, or continuity and change over time. They're scored one point per part and three points per question. Again, you need to write within the square space. Nothing beyond. You need to do each part of the question separately. Guys, here's the thing. Most SAQs will consist of part A, part B, and part C. So you'll have question 1A, question 1B, question 1C. And you actually need to respond to them and label them as A, B, and C, not as one giant paragraph. Each response can be as short as two great sentences. Try to be brief and accurate. Generally, three sentences is a safe zone because you can answer it, so you identify it with the first sentence, and then your second and third sentences are specific historical evidence that explains the answer. And again, they must be complete sentences. That goes without saying, you're writing in sentences, but you got to write in complete sentences, no bullet points, no giant paragraphs. This is the SAQ rubric. So take a look. Full credit earned versus common issues. So part A, how do you get the point? You answer the question. 
And a common issue is people don't answer the question or they don't use keywords. Instead, they'll just grab something, a direct quote, that doesn't help them. Part B, you cite evidence. And then part C, you explain evidence. Now, this is all for one question, guys. So with question 1A, you answer the question, you cite evidence, you explain that evidence. So again, how to ace the SAQ? So this graph has not been updated because it says four questions, 50 minutes. It should say 40 minutes. Here's the deal. When you're doing the SAQ, you A, answer the question, you C, cite specific evidence, you E, explain how that evidence proves the assertion. So some advice. Pay close attention to the verbs. Most will generally be identify and explain. So again, identify, provide evidence, explain the evidence. And what we've seen so far on this new exam format they're usually identify and explain. You need to make sure you're addressing the question. Your response is appropriate to the theme. Here's the biggest thing, guys. When you're doing an SAQ, three sentences. This is not an essay. So for each SAQ for 1A, 1B, and 1C, for each letter, 1A, three sentences. 1B, three sentences. 1C, three sentences for a total of nine sentences altogether. And I know I keep reiterating, do it separately, do it separately. But I say that because, and I'm going over it again and again, guys, because if you do not answer 1A by itself, 1B by itself, 1C by itself, and you write just one giant paragraph, you will not get credit for it. So for example, what I have done is grabbed a prompt. Historians have argued that the adoption of agriculture during the Neolithic Revolution was one of the most important transformations in human history. So this is a historian's argument. So part A, identify and explain one positive result of the Neolithic Revolution. B, identify and explain one negative result of the Neolithic Revolution. And C, identify and explain one feature that distinguished the Neolithic Revolution from the Paleolithic Age. New Stone Age, Old Stone Age. All right, let me offer you guys some advice. First things first, when you are looking at an SAQ, you want to make sure you read A, B, and C very carefully and think about your response before you actually write it. The next slide you're going to see are my answers to this SAQ prompt, just so you can see what one would look like. And when I wrote this, I gave this beautiful answer for 1A. I explained very well. I identified and explained it like nobody's business. One positive result of the Neolithic Revolution. And then I got to part C. And I was like, huh. Everything that's very easily coming to mind right now, that one feature that distinguished the Neolithic age from the Paleolithic age, I've already talked about in part A. So two lessons. Number one, do not go overboard when you are doing your SAQs like yours truly did. 1A ended up being seven sentences. And then I had to go back and completely start over because everything I wanted to talk about for C, I had already talked about. Now that's fine for me because I had all the time in the world to get this done. Y'all got 40 minutes to do three sets of these. So if you make a mistake like I did, it's gonna cost you very valuable time. So make sure you take the time to read through each one and think about it before you actually start writing it. All right. Historians have argued that the adoption of agriculture during the Neolithic Revolution was one of the most important transformations in human history. I want you guys to pause this for just a few minutes and I want you to read through this. I'm not going to read it to you. Just read through it. And I want you to pay attention about how I identified and how I explained. And you'll notice the first sentence in every single one of my answers restates the prompt. So identify and explain one positive result of the Neolithic Revolution. One positive result of the Neolithic Revolution. 
I've restated the prompt. Was the establishment of permanent dwellings that would evolve into civilizations? And then I've answered it. So I've restated the prompt. I've identified one positive re result. And now the rest of my answer is giving specific evidence that explains this and why this is a positive result. So do that with the rest of A and then with B and C. See where I've identified and then take a look at the, the specific historical evidence. So please pause. And now you've unpaused. And we're moving on. These are two examples from the College Board. The SAQ, CB Sample 1, identify and explain two factors before 1450 CE, that's common era, that account for the pattern of the caravansier shown on the map. Identify and explain one reason that the caravansier shown on the map declined in significance in the period 1450 to 1750 CE. So again, as you know, CE is common era. It's replaced what you may have heard before as AD. And BC has been replaced by BCE, before common era. So look at these prompts. Pause if you need to refresh. And this is what College Board said will have a, well, would count as a good response. A good response will provide and explain two factors that account for the spatial patterns of the spread of the caravansier before 1450 CE. Such factors include improved transportation, technologies, and commercial practices that led to the increased volume and expansion of trade, as well as the expansion of new empires, such as the Caliphates and Mongols that facilitated the Eurasian trade and drew new peoples and places in the trade networks. A good response must also briefly explain the decline of these overland trade routes after 1450 CE due to the growing volume of maritime trade facilitated by European traders and joint stock companies that used American silver to purchase Asian goods. Obviously, you want to expand, but that's what a good response would include. It's specific examples. And then a second one. I'll let you guys pause this for a minute to read these questions for SAQ College Board Sample 2. Please pause. And now you've unpaused. So what good responses will include? Again, from the College Board. So take a moment here, pause this, read through it. And now you've unpaused. So just in review, guys, four questions, well, four question choices, you pick three, 40 minutes. Answer the question, so identify the claim, cite specific factual evidence, and then explain how the evidence proves the assertion. And remember, you do this as A, B, and C. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. You have any questions at all? Let me know. Have a great night. Cheers.